morning. Um, I'm so excited to be here, and um, I really want to say how much I appreciated being a part of Molly because it's provided so many different opportunities. Um, but I feel very lucky, too, because in my lifetime, I have been an arts educator and a visual art teacher. Um, I, um, my workshop is Brains on Fire, how research on the brain can inform arts education. And the reason that this has intrigued me is because I felt like I have a frontline opportunity as a visual art teacher for many years, and then following that as a principal uh, of an elementary school where we brought in arts integration on a regular basis uh, in community with the Stonington Opera House, and really did professional development very seriously with students. Um, so my fascination is, so what is it about the arts that when kids came to my art room, they were always eager and happy to be there? What is it about the arts that really engages students? I've always had, and we all have, this intuitive feeling that there is so much that they are learning, and yet can we prove it? What is it about the art? Why is there a disconnect at the policy level or at the uh, level of leadership in, in education about you know funding for the arts and, and so on. So you know the, the the possibilities of learning something about the brain and what the um, connections can be and can we use evidence in neuroeducation now, which is an emerging field, to really help us. Um, so that's my. But I want to tell you. I want to introduce you to uh, some students. Meet Kevin. Kevin was a student in my art class. This is about 20 years old. Um, you know a Kevin. He is in fourth grade, and, um, always in trouble, can't sit still, um, kind of annoying to his classmates, but he has some good qualities too. He loved art, he loved animals, and I never had a problem with Kevin at all in my art class. Um, so what happens in art class for Kevin? Why does his behavior change? And if you could hook up some wires to Kevin's brain while he's figuring out how to make this penguin, you would see an awful lot of brain activity happening. Meet, <laughs> meet baby Sam. Um, what does this picture tell you about learning? What opportunities are present here? What does this learning environment require of us as teachers or as parents? Would we allow that as for our own kids? There's a naked baby in the clay. Um, what are the common myths that we have about the brain that may be hampering us as teachers and parents? But think about it. Imagine this baby with wires on this brain. Could you see the, the fireworks going off on that and that? And what is that kid learning right now? Imagine. Meet Faith and Haley. These are two second graders who were in my school at the time. I was there as principal. Um, they were inspired by a performance in poetry and rap that the Kennedy Center brought into our school. Uh, second graders were in the audience. Faith, in particular, was really inspired. She wanted to do a rap performance and asked her teacher if she could do it. Um, and we gave her that opportunity, and it had made a tremendous uh, impact on her life. So what impact might inspiration and opportunity have on carrying out an idea or an opportunity to perform, perform as a second grader to an audience. What does it do to creative confidence? The, the notion of creative confidence is so important in our, okay. Um, so, I want you to meet Albert. Everybody knows Albert. Um, and I, I will be telling a story in my workshop about what happened to him as a young child, how he was inspired, and what he um, actually had to provide for us. So I want to also talk about what doors do we open in our classroom and what doors do we shut and 
what, um, you know, what, are the, what is the brain research that is out there that can actually help us as arts educators? We'll be looking at that. I'll give you time to really explore a plethora of resources, and then uh, you can go home with some really good ideas for connecting the dots between reality and the, re the scientific research. Thank you. <laughs>